Hello everyone, this is Heaven and I'm here at Synthesis 2012 for World Unity 2012. And I am so excited because sitting next to me are Kimberly and Foster Gamble who just gave an amazing keynote speech and uh, we have an opportunity to ask them a few questions. So welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heaven. Good to be with you. Good Thank to you. be in Heaven. Good to be good to be sharing and co-creating Heaven on the New Earth. Exactly. And without a doubt, the movie Thrive has a lot to contribute to that direction of co-creating and anchoring a whole new way of being. And I want to first of all thank you both for making that movie. And I've absolutely screened it and supported it. And we were just talking a moment ago about um, the greatest prison that people live in is the fear of what other people think. So you obviously overcame that in making the movie and I want to ask you what impact has it had on the lives of the people who are here today? <laughs> well I can say that um, it's been you know widely uh, well received. It's been there are over a million people a month see Thrive Wow! and um, that's continued to be steady so it's over 11 million people that we know about and clearly each DVD is seen by more than one person but it's 11 million people that we can count and it's in 21 languages now Amazing. and I think that um, what really is the sign of how it's impacted people is that our intention was to have it just be the minimum sufficient understanding that people needed in order to engage in more effective solutions and so we created at thrivemovement.com we created a solutions hub because really the movie was always intended as a trailer for the website and the website was intended to be a tool for the movement and to empower self-creating movements already and so this network of networks that we've created as a solutions hub at thrivemovement.com has you know over 500 groups from over 70 different countries um, already signed up to share really the best practices of their solutions so that each uh, community that takes something on can look to the solutions hub to get information lawsuits petitions artwork flyers whatever it is, uh, especially the data that's used to uh, make progress in one community can then be downloaded to facilitate another community. So that's um, really the impact to see how how energized that whole Solutions Hub is, mm -hmm. um, is one of the ways that I feel most excited about the impact of Thrive around the world. Awesome, thank you for answering that question. So let's just jump into my, my question to you, Kimberly, which is what is going to happen in 2013? What new programs, projects, visions, and, and inspirations yeah. are you are you in the, the, the Thrive organization bringing out to help the planet transform? Well, um, Thrive is a really small organization. We intend to keep it that way. Okay. And so really we are about empowering uh, existing individuals and groups uh, and organizations out there who are engaged. So um, toward that end, what we're going to do is we have the tool of the Solutions Hub, but we're going to be providing an online training to actually help use a whole systems 12 sector model um, mm -hmm. of solutioning where people get to identify their own you know most passionate issue and then where what level of engagement they want to participate in so on that note may I ask you what is the number one most passionate issue I think the most passionate issue that we hear about is free energy free energy uh, yeah yes. people really want to um, I mean the Shifting the geopolitical dynamic in this uh, world would happen most of all, most quickly, if people had access to energy. Absolutely. And so um, now that we've been able, you know, Foster and I have had the privilege to actually visit the labs and see the free energy. And so, in fact, so what are we going to be doing uh, in 2013? Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a training to help uh, with the solutions hub mm -hmm. so that people can take that on. And we're going to be focusing on chemtrails, which we can is Great. another core issue. Um, for that training and another thing we're going to be doing is focusing on free energy mm -hmm. and facilitating um, getting the scientists and the engineers and the manufacturers and the distributors and the funders and the inventors uh, aligned in a way that we can really uh, help vet and disseminate the most effective technologies both for uh, energy and for water purification and health uh, alternative health modalities also how so exciting those are two of the four things we're going to be doing uh, the other is that uh, we have thrive TV and we're going to be uh, creating uh, video blogs um, really focusing on the issue of liberty uh, nonviolent non-participation 
uh, toward uh, using the principle of non-violation as the operating principle for all solutions mm -hmm. um, in our uh, intention to get to really a whole new paradigm of uh, social organizing. And that, so Foster's going to be hosting that um, video blog. And then the other thing we're going to be doing is marketing Thrive, which we've never done. So these 11 million people, it's all been word of mouth. And, and uh, you know, people have translated it into, now it's 21 languages. Uh, so uh, is, is, have you covered all four? Or yes, so getting the movie out. Let's take a moment. And let, can, can you hear us? Okay, great. I feel it's important to reiterate, so let's repeat okay, so one. Okay, so we're going to be... Um, providing a training for the uh, whole system solution strategy that we um, have in place. So we're okay, going to be training. Taking, yeah, a training for the solutions hub. Mm -hmm. We're going to be continuing to vet and um, help disseminate and do what's needed to develop and disseminate free energy technology, Great. including for water purification. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be doing the uh, televised blog um, around liberty mm -hmm. and getting people with different opinions to have respectful conversations with each other as we navigate this new, new way. And then we're going to be marketing Thrive into the mainstream and having it be hundreds of millions of people who actually get a chance to see it. Beautiful, thank you. So my question here to you is, is the world waking up? Absolutely. Uh, we're thrilled to see that the world is, is waking up. We've been blessed to, to visit over 30 cities mm -hmm. uh, on, a, on our Thrive tour, and it's just like looking into a fractal. We, we're not sure which city we're in because we're looking out just into a sea of awake, motivated, compassionate people who are, have gotten informed enough mm -hmm. that they're committed to taking action and they're, and they're coming to these Solutions Summit days that, mm -hmm. that we've been taking. And originally we were just screening the film and doing Q&As. Now it's like, okay, we've seen the film. Right. We want to take action. So right. people are getting together uh, in this Solutions model and finding each other by issue and by region and so forth. So it's really literally a dream come true for us because the whole reason we made it was to empower effective solutions. And it's happening. Absolutely. Thank you. So. Um, as far as uh, 2012 and what is happening as a result of this great shift that's, hap that's already happened, we've come through the birth canal, probably with a lot of birthing pains. Um, my question to you, Foster, is how do the themes in Thrive, the movie, relate to an event such as Synthesis 2012? Uh, it's a wonderful question, and the, the, they're really simultaneous. That's the tricky part for people to get, that we are have been in a period of major contraction worldwide mm -hmm. in terms of people getting sick, getting in debt, getting dumbed down, uh, you know, wars and all, all the pollution and stuff, uh, and an increasing police state. And unfortunately, that's probably going to continue for a little while. I think, you know, it's going to get probably more painful before it, uh, it before it really releases. But at the same time, as we mentioned in Thrive, there is the strongest spiritual emergence in the history of the planet going on. And it's just the corporate media doesn't cover that. <laughs> but it's really, that's what's going on in most people's lives everywhere we go. So as people are becoming more and more free and aware inside themselves, they're also becoming more aware outside themselves. So they're taking that hard work, one inner freedom and then wanting to manifest it as outer freedom, to have uh, freedom as communities, free, free economies, free, free energy. I don't mean that it doesn't have a price on it, but that it's safe and that it's available to, to everyone. And so as people are matching their inner world with their outer world, we're going through that birth canal that, that you're talking about. And what we're seeing is the more informed people are, the more hopeful they are. Mm -hmm. It's because they've got a real situation that they can create real solutions uh, to match. So it's really thrilling what we're seeing. I agree with you. And um, so now, as far as the birth canal, that brings up the next question. In your talk today, I really loved what you were talking about in reference to the feminine energy. Yes. Would you speak into that right now? <laughs> well, it's one of my favorite topics. And Great, my, me too. My, <laughs> my, my main teacher is sitting by my side. Uh, and one of the things that I really learned from Kimberly was during the process of the film, uh, she was the director and I was um, did most of the on-screen hosting. So she was directing me. When we got to the I global, when we got to the global <laughs> domination, uh, men pay attention. They are good directors. <clears throat> um, 
When we got to the global domination section, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a pretty mild-mannered person. I'm, I've been committed to nonviolence all my life, but I can get pretty, you know, riled up when I think about what a few people are doing destroying billions of lives. And Kimberly would just keep saying, okay, great, now let's try one more take on that. <laughs> Come from your confidence about the way out and just deliver the information. Leave people their own room for their own emotional response. And it, it took like 19 takes the first time before she finally said, that's what I was looking for. I took a break, came off the set, and most of the crew was in tears. And when I was talking about the most horrible information in the film, I thought something just happened here. And it was that they had been moved by really the opportunity to face the predicament that we were in because this whole feminine approach is just is dancing with rather than I dominating or, or pushing around. And just in the same way that you can access free energy only by dancing with it, the way women are, are much better at doing and the way our culture more uh, encourages you to do, men need to learn how to humbly dance with what's going on. There's way more power once you dance with the patterns of energy itself, whether it's free energy or the agenda it, itself or the information about the agenda. So this, this feminine energy is... Uh, it's not that it's not powerful. It's the most powerful energy, frankly, I've ever seen in the human field. I is a agree. is a woman protecting other hu uh, human beings, especially, particularly their offspring. In my lifetime as an activist, what I've seen is as soon as the women get really involved in something, it's going to happen. It, it's d it might as well be done. But it's allowing for particularly for men, letting that energy in is allowing the wildness, the spontaneousness, at the same time that the power stays gentle, rather than being an imposition. It's it's an invitation, you know, it, it's an inspiration. How beautiful. That was so beautifully articulated. I'm inspired. So, um, what is your passionate intent for your vision and, and uh, what's going to happen with Thrive in 2013 and beyond? And that's to both of you. Mm -hmm. Well, Kimberly mentioned the main four areas that we're working on, and three of those are my particular passions. So I'm going to be working on facilitating getting free energy out in a safe, you know, uh, worldwide way. And could you give us a guesstimate? I know it's impossible because it, it, all the factors, you know, that that come into it, but. What's the time frame we're looking at? Well, someone asked me recently what I saw for the future. Of course, I don't know. I mean, I know a lot about what's going on, but I don't know what's going to be going on in the future. Mm -hmm. But what, the way I responded, maybe part of it was intuition, part of it was my understanding, is that I think in the next five years there will be 200 or more free energy companies throughout the world successfully selling or giving away these products. Hallelujah. Praise Goddess. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I want to mention about the free energy yeah. is that, you know, having the opportunity uh, to actually visit the labs and meet with the inventors. And then since Thrive, um, a lot of what we've been focused on is, um, and Foster in particular, but I'll speak for you and for us on this, it's that, you know, there are scientists who are both uh, traditionally educated um, and open-minded enough to be able to verify the technology that more energy is coming out than is going in. That's, that's over unity free energy. That's the point of it is that um, it's accessing, you know, often people call it the void in the universe. It's really the plenum because when you see free energy operate, what you realize is that it's proof that we are living, we are made of and living within an alive, infinite, universe and that in itself a living universe a living universe and it's so it's not just a new technology but it's a new paradigm because it's proof of that concept but you know so it's the scientists and it's the engineers and it's the inventors and it's the funders and it's a whole new business model for figuring out you know millions and billions of dollars are going into this technology People deserve to be paid back for that or to make money on that without becoming a new mega conglomerate, you know, energy hoarding company. That's not the point. So all of that is a part of what's being developed. So it's not that the technology isn't there. It's that the technology and then how does this interface even, you know, one of the things um, I've learned about since Thrive has come out is 3D printing. And I encourage anybody uh, listening to this to get uh, informed about it because it's just a fabulous uh, new opportunity for uh, how to shift manufacturing and distribution of things. So the global, it's going to be a global dissemination of uh, the new energy technology because that's what's going to shift the whole dynamic on the planet and that's what's going to make a whole new paradigm for social organizing possible. So 
What is the key to creating a thriving planet with peace and plenty for all? Something simple yeah. that, let's say, somebody who doesn't attend Synthesis 2012, somebody who's maybe watching yeah. the broadcast, what is something really super but easy? First of all, I just have to mention the wonderful synchronicity that the band uh, who's yes. doing our background at the, mo yes. at the moment is called The Luminaries. Right, right. And they're, they're the band that came out with the first major free energy song right. that went viral across the planet. They played at our premiere, <laughs> and I recommend that everybody check out that song. It's just called Free Energy by The Luminaries because it says it really beautifully. Yes, it does. In terms, in terms of a simple answer to there your... There are no accidents, right? Yes. <laughs> All part of the divine dance. So a simple answer to the question uh, that you're asking about what, what's it going to take to actually create a thriving planet, and that, that was really the question we were asking in Thrive. For me, the essence of it is the torus, is this whirlpool vortex, because if we learn how that works and then design all of our systems in coherence with the way the universe designs a healthy living system, which is always toroidal in nature, then we can have an economy that includes everyone and doesn't have artificial blocks or you know counterfeit or fraud uh, involved. If we want to access free energy, we simply dance with that, that toroidal field. If we want to have justice on the planet, then we recognize that the fundamental torus at the human level is every single being. It's not, well, what's, the, what's for the good of the group? We'll, we'll violate these individuals for the good of the group. That's what every tyrant in history has persuaded people to do. And we need to graduate beyond that. You know, we've come so far from the pharaohs to the, the kings and the, you know, the, the priests and the uh, communism and, and fascism and socialism. So we've come a long way to democracy. But it's still, if it's majority vote, it's mob rule. And there, therefore, in the early democracies, women weren't included and blacks weren't included, poor people weren't included. We need to take that next step and go all the way to liberty and justice for all. And that means no systems which are based on the violation of any individual against their will, except in real self-defense. So that means no authoritarian state. So we need to figure out how to do all of these things, how to do the money system and security systems and insurance and, and voluntary commerce and so forth. The good news is a tremendous amount of that has already been figured out by wonderful philosophers philosophers and economists and so forth that people simply need to find out about. And we're, we're going to be talking about that a lot in 2013. And that which hasn't been figured out will be figured out easily by billions of people being freed up in their creativity. I love that. And Kimberly? Yeah, well, I would say the same thing. To me, uh, I'm not by nature a scientist. I'm more the um, social activist. And so to me, it's the application of the Taurus in the form of non-violation. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, the personal challenge that people go through in the process of waking up and coming into integrity with ourselves really begs the question of accountability. And to me, that's the interface with the whole notion of authority. And what happens when we abdicate our own responsibility and accountability to create the world we want to see because we think some government's going to do it for us. Mm -hmm. And the fact is they've never done it for us. And it's not just um, the responsibility, but it's our opportunity to do that. And I believe with non-violation as the guiding principle, I, I really believe that um, in my lifetime I will see, the, you know, not just free energy, but the paradigm shift that um, it, it brings in, it ushers in at the same time. As a woman, I appreciate your passionate intent greatly. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, I would love to ask both of you, because you are both a, a, such an excellent embodiment and example of balanced partnership. And has this, some, has this been something that has just been gifted to you by the universe because of your, of your very high sacred calling to ha create a thriving planet? Or is it something that you've worked on? I'm so totally diverging, but I, this is an important question. Well, I think that it required that um, we both really took care of knowing ourselves and being true to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So that what emerged was um, two whole individuals coming together. Mm -hmm. And so the whole, it, it's sort of the same answer in this notion of uh, integrity and tending to oneself and then manifesting that out within an accountable, responsible way. Mm -hmm. Like we come at all of this from different sensibilities, but a shared core value mm -hmm. and respect and, for And what each is that other. shared core value? 
I think the core value is um, one, really respecting, uh, building the relationship on respect, and that in our um, manifestation of whether it's Thrive or the projects going forward, mm -hmm. we always hold our relationship uh, first. So um, whatever, because there's always that creative tension, you know, I think one thing he thinks another and we do that, but um, to do that in a way of respect um, with each other said that the first thing we're going to do is always hold the relationship first. How beautiful. So we're getting ready to wrap things up. I want to thank both of you for showing up in this powerful field and uh, sharing your, your, your very important message with the world. And I believe the world is waking up. And so whatever, um, whatever last words that you would like to share with our audience that might empower them even more to get engaged, please. I'd love to reflect for a moment on this shift that we're going through Please. Uh, because it, it's such an amazing unprecedented time in terms of cosmic alignment mm -hmm. and cosmic these cosmic forces are very real I don't understand them astrology and that a whole lot mm -hmm. but I know and just the little old moon can yeah. pull the entire ocean you know several feet twice a day and you picture these these suns that are all lining up it's an important moment but it's not a moment that is going to happen without our participation it's not happening to us the field is being amplified <clears throat> but it's up to each one of us to make that shift inside ourselves and it's the shift toward letting go of the illusion of authority of honoring the feminine of realizing that at the same time that we're distinct from each other we're also unified and we need to treat each other uh, that way so I think that there's an opportunity here it's like a sunrise like the logo we have for Thrive is that uh, that there's a, a, a light that is dawning it's dim but it's coming on strong and each one of us has the opportunity in this turning to make it uh, just a, a uh, an absolute luminous field of love. Thank you both so much, Thank and you, um, uh, uh, this is this has been one of my favorite moments at Synthesis 2012 because what you're offering are absolutely very clear, tangible, grounded solutions so that we can birth the new earth and experience heaven in the new golden age. So thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you. you so much. Great pleasure. Thank you.